My name is Edith and many years ago this was my family's home. These fields are the very same that my forefathers cleared from the woods and scrubland. Of course, they made sure there were still many trees round the edges and they left plenty of small pockets of woodland. Shores, we called them. I hear that in places far from here, they cleared all the trees. I cannot believe it myself. What would they do for firewood? Where would they get the wood from to make the tools and build the houses? And what would they fatten their pigs on come the autumn if they didn't have acorns? Oh, not just the pigs, neither. I mind in many years when the crops have failed, I myself have ground up the acorns and added it to the pottage to keep soul and body together. Aye, our trees give us as much as the crops do and they're more reliable by far. Looking at our old farm, I find it hard to believe that the fields haven't changed. I thought they'd have been straightened out a bit by now, made bigger by all your fancy machinery. Aye, but I expect you found the same as us. It just isn't worth the effort. Crops never grew well on the clay earth. The sheep and our few pigs and cattle are what kept us going then. And the steep sides of the streams are only good for trees, for wood supplies. The land looks the same. But our life was different then, harder. Our life was all about survival. Making enough to pay our taxes, feed the family and stay out of trouble. Harvest was back-breaking work then. Hard work it was, especially knowing that one stook in every ten would go to the abbot at Battle Abbey in tithe <laughs> and of what little was left we had to give some to the lord of the manor in rent oh his reeves made sure of that and it wasn't only a share of our crops we had to give <laughs> no we had to give labor too yes we had to give our labor to the lord of the manor wasn't easy that especially at busy times like harvest oh but the lord's Fields came first. I see you still put the animals out to graze on the harvested land. You know as well as we did then that it puts good meat on their bones and clears the ground, making it ready for a healthy crop the following year. At the time of the plague, that that they called the Black Death, the crops just rotted in the fields with no one to gather them in and the beasts wandered free and fell into streams and lay there and died where they lay, the rotting carcasses polluting the water. Oh, death was everywhere. We thought the world was coming to the end, surely, as a punishment for us, for our sins. God only knows how we survived. We prayed a lot, but then everyone prayed. I heard later from the peddler that the powerful abbot at the great abbey of battle was struck down by the pestilence. Much good his full tithe barn did for him then. I made pockets of sweet smelling herbs for our family to ward off the vapours that they say carry the plague and I spread herbs all over the floors. It worked well for us. Death never crossed over our threshold. Or maybe you just couldn't find us, tucked away here among the woods. <laughs> or perhaps he started off down the path and he got stuck in the clay and the mud. <laughs> well, he wouldn't have been the first. <laughs>